vents. Today, we're discussing everything to do with candlesticks, a common kind of technical analysis technique, but the way we're going to be looking at it today is a little bit different, more in an advanced session. And of course, how do we bring it together with so many other great reasons uh, to like TA and do like more, more importantly, scalping, day trading and swing trading. It's really an all encompassing one. My name's Thomas Atkinson. As always, I'm joined by Ty Annabella. How are you going this week, Ty? You having a good time? I'm having a great time. I'm having a great time. It's nearly Christmas and candlesticks are one of our favorite topics because they tell us everything we need to know about the buyers and the sellers, Tom. In It doesn't matter whether we're looking at the euro, it doesn't matter whether we're looking at CBA Bank um, or Netflix. They tell us everything we need to know. So can't wait to get into it and take it to an advanced level. Obviously, candlesticks also being, tied one of the most important of the technical analysis techniques because, of course, when you think about it, it's ultimately price action. So... Yeah, you, most people don't know this, but uh, candlesticks really are just a bar. But of course, we have the drawn-in section, aren't they? So the thing yeah. is, it's it's line charts are closes. Bars and candlesticks have a lot in common. Uh, but I think candlesticks are the most pretty when we put them on the chart, which is, you know, it's always important when you're looking at something for hours of the day, it is nicer to see it. So as always, we'll be covering quite a few topics. We'll be going to multi time frame analysis. We'll be looking at com candlestick combinations. What are some of our favorites? And then, of course, we'll do some volume analysis techniques with candlesticks as well, integrating a couple of methods together. We do encourage everyone that's here as well to ask questions. If you have a question, why not ask it live? We'll answer it. And of course, that is partly why we do these things. So if you have anything that you want to ask, let us know and we'll get to it throughout the session. Now, before we get started, we've got a little intro, a little disclaimer. So we'll see you back here in just a few moments and uh, we'll be right back. Here we go. All right, so the ultimate candlestick trio, the top three patterns unraveled for trading success. Which candlestick patterns do we usually start with? What candlestick patterns do institutions tend to use? And how do we read them a little bit differently? And our favorite candlestick pattern overall. This is a great topic and a good one to start with. So let's talk about everything to do with candlesticks now, Tyrone. And I want to talk about price action first because, of course, when we're going to candlesticks, it's not about necessarily the candlestick about itself. It's about where it's placed, isn't it? If we find it in the right point of a distribution, a reaccumulation, a demand zone, any of these types of things, if it's in the right area, it makes a big difference. One of our favorites is, of course, the hammer and the shooting star. If they're at the tops of distributions or the bottoms of accumulations, they could be some of the best areas and locations, couldn't they? Absolutely. And they give us the biggest clue as to what could potentially happen next with a, a great deal of confidence because we understand exactly what the buyers and sellers have done for that particular period. Now, you know, the, the caveat with candle six, of course, is quite like we talk about a lot of the patterns and a lot of the steps that we talk about, the bigger the time frame, the more important the candle, of course. And and daily is one of the uh, the favorite charts for us because a daily candle basically integrates all of the world markets uh, action for the uh, one particular day, okay? So you've got the European markets, you've got the American markets, and you've got the Asian markets all having a say, especially in things like indices that are 24, five and a half markets and currencies where the market literally doesn't stop until um, end of New York on Friday and yeah, opens up again uh, New Zealand on Monday. So you've got a lot of action and the daily gives us all that information, Tom. And there's not a lot of indicators that can give you a whole day's worth of worldwide action. Um, really, is there? That's, that's why they're so powerful. That's exactly correct. Let's go through a couple of our favorite candlestick patterns, Ty, as well. Let's talk about some of them. So we've got the shooting star. We've got the hammer, often known as pin bars. This is what people often look for. Then, of course, we have one of our favorites as well, which is this one here. Now, Ty, this is probably your favorite candlestick pattern overall. What do you think about that one there? It is. I wish it wasn't disappearing, but <laughs> okay, I, I put it on. I put it on the timer. It's okay. There we go. I'll draw it for you again. Okay. This one, um, oh, this one's in the quicker timer. <laughs> well, all right. we'll put it up. We'll put it on stagnant. Yeah. There we go. That's, that's all right. An evening, that's an what do you think star. about this one? Okay, that's an evening yep. star, and uh, and what that tells, what I like about this particular pattern, Tom, especially in the right area. Again, like we talked about earlier, it's got to be in the right area really for it to be most effective. Uh, is it gives us 
basically, if, if you're talking about a daily um, setup, three different days of action. And that what that does, it really gives the market a chance to change and switch momentum. That's what I think is, is why it's so powerful. You get a full day of bullish movement, for instance. Then you get the indecision candle or the shooting star candle above that. And then you get the next day, which basically reverses the entire uh, buy period of the previous two days. And when you see that sort of action, it, it really goes a long way to reversing uh, that particular trend if it's going up and if it's at resistance in particular. Of course, the um, the morning star pattern is the complete opposite. So yeah, that really halts what is a downtrend. Uh, it finds support. The, the, the best setup is actually at support. And you've got three days worth of price action that actually verifies and changes the momentum effectively. That's what you're looking for. You're changing them. Um, to reverse a trend, you need a switch in momentum. And That's an right. evening star or a morning star gives you that switch in momentum. That's why they're so powerful and so important. It's not a, a fly-by-night sort of trade. You're talking about three days worth of action. If we're looking mm -hmm. at a weekly chart, that's nearly a month. Like you're three weeks of a month there reversing what could be a very, very serious trend. So that's why they're so powerful. And I, and I, I love them. They're probably one of my favorites. Yeah, so we've got the hammer. We've got the shooting star. We've got the evening and the morning star. There's some great candlestick patterns to start off with. But I've got another one that I want to bring up, which, you know, a lot of institutions actually use, or at least they can be used a lot better in our technical analysis techniques. And that's going to be the doji candle, often misrepresented and misunderstood, I believe, as being one of the most important candles for us to trade off and to understand. So in essence, what is a doji candle? Well, a doji candle is technically a low, a high, an open and a close that are generally near each other. And it shows us a few things. Now, some people talk this as an indecision candle. So it's something where markets haven't really made any particular decision yet. I like to think of it as it's also market equilibrium. When you think about it, the dynamic between the buyers and the sellers is effectively even. And when we have even buyers and sellers, that's going to be very important because even buyers and sellers shows us that we are at a point where something big could be happening and the markets have effectively found that equilibrium. Now, if the market breaks to the upside, a common technique would be generally by textbook to look for a buy. But what I actually like to do, Ty, is I like to see markets come back to these levels because you'll notice that what happens is this was a level where there were buyers and sellers. The market then broke up and the laws of supply and demand usually state that if the market breaks to the upside, then clearly demand outstrips supply. So if the market comes back to this level, why wouldn't it act as some form of technical support? And I think that's one of the key things that we always look for here on the charts and something that I'm always looking for anyway. So the doji candle or equilibrium is a big deal. Now, this is also used by institutions. We'll, sh we'll talk about it on the charts a little bit soon and how we can use Tyrone's time frame that he was talking about before being the daily a little bit more effectively. Because what is a doji really? If that's a daily candle tie, what does that tell us about the underlying day? What happened during that day, that session? Well, effectively, what it's giving us is the entire range of the day. And it's giving us the, the beautiful thing about candles is they're very easy to understand. Even a, a beginner mm. can understand how a candle works within their first hour of actually understanding it. You've got the high, the low, the open and the close. They're the only four pieces of information that forms a candle and a bar for that matter. So mm -hmm. what we're seeing here is this basically is the representation of the open and the close. So this center line here is the open and the close. It's not always that perfect, but it's generally very, very close. That's what uh, really makes it uh, that equilibrium candle that Tom is talking about. But what it also shows us is that there was a, a, a buyer war and a seller war right throughout that daily period. So now we don't know for sure whether it was which session actually pushed it higher or lower, not by looking at that candle, but that's why we look at volume profiles, how we can understand that more with a volume profile. But when mm -hmm. we uh, look at that for fa in phase value, the buyers and the sellers have had a serious crack at both directions and the market has effectively closed where it opened. So no one really won that war, uh, but there was a war, make no mistake. I think the thing that's really amazing about it is when you think about it, the day had trapped those prices. So probably yep. there was a war, there was some kind of war going on underneath and that was most likely creating what we call market structure. Now, market structure is really important to understand because, of course, it means that orders were placed into the system. So you can see that when you learn about candles, there is an, a beginner way of thinking about candles, there is an intermediate way of thinking about candles, and then there is an advanced way of thinking about candles. And the more advanced candles technique is thinking about candles as actually creating structure 
and therefore psychology of the market. What actually is going on underneath? What can we gain from a deeper understanding of the market overall? So wicks, hammers, shooting stars, all of these things are really, really important and something that we'll be looking at. And really what I like to think about is what do wicks tell us as well, Ty? That's another one that I think institutions use. Wicks show to me that there's excitement in the market. And if the market's excited, then why shouldn't we be getting a little bit excited about it? Wicks show us that somebody mm. has deemed it to be potentially a good buy or a good sell, and they've pushed that price very quickly away from that point. And when we see wicks stack on a level, that can be a bit of a sign, can't it? So candlesticks are great at being able to expose these wicks in a much easier to view form than something like a bar chart. Would you agree yeah, that that's much I easier? Do. And I think that's that's what it is. Look, with, with trading, um, like anything really, when we're looking at uh, becoming traders or wanting to become yeah professional or semi-professional at the art <clears> of, <throat> we want to make the job as simple as possible. And the more visual something can be, the the more... I guess the faster you can analyze it. Okay. Now, obviously, yeah, green, um, we've got green and red candles here, which is very common and probably the most common color of candles, but really they can be any color you want as long as they're meaningful to you. So really the advantage that a candle has over a bar is immediately uh, you've got your, you know, uh, your biases are set immediately because you can see them straight away. Wicks, when they line up the way um, we've circled here, are amazing. I love those setups because they are telling us a lot about what the market is doing. The, the fact that the market's reacting off those zones and reacting sharply to form the wicks in the first place is telling us that it is an, it is an exciting level. There's excitement there. We know that the market is going to kick off there and with a bit of a uh, bit of venom, really, isn't it? Like it's not. Uh, we're not seeing closes mm -hmm. there. We're not seeing breaks of those levels. What we are no. seeing is reactions every time it touches it. So there's no reason to believe uh, otherwise. Uh, while we see that, yeah, we're really going to be looking at trading that, and that's the idea with um, yeah setting up the candles the way we do that we're able to actually trade what we see, not just look at them and say they look pretty. Yeah, so Wyckoff said this really tied by saying successful tape <laughs> reading is the study of force. Hey, it's important. We got to reiterate such things like this. I found that a lot of people, you know, even though you can maybe say say something ten times, it takes actually. It's like a book. If you read a book one or two times, you actually might not understand it fully. So Wyckoff tells us <laughs> that successful tape <laughs> reading is the study of force. It requires the ability to judge which side has the greatest pulling power, and one must have the courage to go with that side. Now, let's have a look at this in the context of the market and the context of candlesticks because here's an example on the pound US dollar taken from a, a recent trade and some recent large wicks that we've seen actually appear. Now, this is the pound US dollar and you can see that it's kind of coming down a little bit now, showing a little bit of weakness here and we're making a series of lower lows and lower highs. Now, what actually happens here is we breach through what I would argue, and a lot of people would probably figure out, that this is a very important zone. Now, if I highlight this for everybody so that we can see it here on the charts, you'll be able to see that we had this little bit of structure here that was a demand that was broken. And then that supply here, because this supply resistance that led to the breakdown was retested. Now, it's important to note that this was retested, then sold, then retested, then sold, okay, making a new lower low. Now, during a news event of the last kind of 24 hours, which is a uh, inflation event, you can see that something happens. The market comes up and it hits into this area again, and then it shows a giant wick. Now, this candle by itself wouldn't really mean that much in, in normal kind of circumstances, but what it meant at this point was it meant that this supply had been respected again and the market or larger liquidity providers had come out to grab some liquidity grab. So they'd, become, they'd come to get some. Now, you can say patience, react, don't predict, because the candlestick actually tells you what your bias might need to be then until the next piece of news. And more importantly, until, of course, we hit into the demand zone where we've seen weeks before. So really, the space from this thing falling back down here, and this is a two hour, so let's have a look at a 15-minute interaction. You can see the 15-minute interaction. If you came in, you were looking at the news and you knew that was a supply and you already had this marked out, which I actually did on this pound. It was um, you know, quite a good level. And then you see it act like this. The week tells us that the market's gone to grab liquidity and then it's decided to go in the opposite direction, opening up the possibility of a short scalp. Now, that's all to do with candle analysis, isn't it, Ty? Bringing it together with a few other things. 
It is absolutely it is, and um, and Blake says that we need to play uh, Wyckoff Bingo to see how long until he appears in each episode. I actually, Blake, I've got to be honest with you. I was going to be um, astounded if Tom was able to bring the Wyckoff picture into this uh, particular session today, <laughs> being candles, but he did find a way, and um, damn, I would have lost the study of four, playing that game. So. The, the... <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I love the quote, guys. What can I say? I love it. I'm still, I'm still learning new things about the uh, Warren Buffett's number one quote, which is "Don't lose money, Ty." And what I mean by that <laughs> is that you know, no, because it, it's actually so profound. You know, these quotes that we hear, they're so right. profound. What? Okay, he says, "Don't lose money." Yeah, no da. But realistically, he's also talking about the idea of compounding your money as well. Like, if you every dollar you lose, it's much harder to get back. Yeah, 100%. and it's also much harder to to gain upon that. And Really, I know that Charlie Munger said this about their, this is just a bit of a side context here, but it comes back to the candlestick deeper understanding. Charlie Munger had this idea where he said, you know, Warren and I probably should have taken a little bit of leverage through our investing journey. And what I mean by that is like, I think it was like, I think he estimated 13% or 15% and how much difference that was going to make. But they chose not to in that case, because what they were doing was they they really want to stick to their rules, which was rule number one, don't lose money. Therefore, in their case, it was we're not going to take our outsource risk on basically what was other people's funds, which is what they built their business on. So in this case, you know, we're, we're doing the same thing. But yeah, I agree. Wyckoff bingo might need to be played. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here are um, a couple of other things here that I want to mention, Ty. Not only is this chart really interesting from, of course, the short perspective in terms of what happened over the last 24 hours and the key level, but more importantly, that wick, which so, which in my opinion holds some excitement, but also we could bring in things like volume profiles. Now, what you're going to notice is that there are certain areas that have been traded. Now, I've just pulled a random zone, so I've pulled the whole way across. What you'd probably be interested in is about this area here. And the reason you'd be so interested in that is because, you know, this was all the way up and all the way down. Some other ones that you could pull were from the high to the low, which would have been around here. And what you would have been most interested in is where have the most amount of trades been going through? Now, if you know anything about volume profile work and you can check out on the Pepperstone channel some other stuff that we've done on volume profile work, what you're looking for is you're looking for zones that have been heavily traded. And you can see here on the way down, there's been quite a lot of trade through this zone here, this zone here, and therefore just underneath is, is where the volume profile is coming up. But we also know from our technical visual perspective that if we were drawing a zone, we should really be drawing it between these kind of areas here. And why should we do that? Because they are the most traded zones. So that gives us a bit of a box. And then if markets come into the top end of the box, I like to think of that as kind of getting the best price type. So I like to kind of break boxes down in my analysis. And what I do is I say, this is expensive price. This is probably fair value price, which is around that POC. And this is cheap price. So if you're looking at the short side, this would be where the market should theoretically get the most excited. And that's what the candle confirmed to us. The wick confirmed the excitement, didn't it? And that's what yeah. I mean by deeper understanding. This is the this is the advanced kind of candlesticks because yeah, you can get a trade, you can get a technical analysis cheat sheet. And sure, we have them over on our website, but you know, really a technical analysis cheat sheet is only the beginning of understanding, isn't it? Absolutely. And and the thing is too, like you say, that excitement, um, warrants more investigation i think that's what it really comes down to when you're trying to do analysis quickly which is what you want to be able to do uh, especially when you're doing it you know at a, a very high level you want to be able to identify the opportunities very quickly so immediately once you see uh that doji candle or indecision candle appear at the right zone immediately that is okay Let's go to the smaller time frames. We know that something's happening here. Let's see if we can identify the opportunity. And that's why we say uh, the candles in the right place is extraordinarily important to actually, yeah, it, a doji in the middle of nowhere is no different to any other candle. And we, we've said that mm -hmm. a lot. And we really believe that it's um, it's identifying them in the correct zones uh, that really makes them powerful. And what it, well, I guess we can't probably emphasize enough how much time you're going to save analyzing when you understand where you want the candles to appear. I think, Tom, it's probably one of the most important rules, isn't it? Uh, being able to identify quickly a key zone and a candle that is telling us that we need to investigate further can basically, you know, take probably 80% of the analysis that you would normally do out of 
out of it. And basically then you're only analyzing quality opportunities because look, there's a million charts, million different timeframes. You can't look at all of them. So you need to really right. isolate the quality very, very quickly. And yeah, when you start to eye the right levels uh, and the right candle structure that you want there, uh, believe me, your analysis um, speed will increase. Uh, and then that cuts down chart time, which is what we actually all want in the end, Tom. Yeah, look, we're, we're looking at, at at being more efficient with our trading. Um, you know, a, a professional athlete doesn't necessarily train all day. What they do is they actually spend a longer time on the mental game. And yeah, trading and is kind of similar. Absolutely. And Absolutely. recovering, exactly. Yep. The mental game, all this recovery stuff. I mean, people are jumping in ice baths now. They're doing cupping tie. They got needles sticking out of all <laughs> every one Absolutely. of their muscles to try to recover yep. quickly because right. that is a huge part of the game. And also getting mental state is a big thing. It's the same it in trading. 100%. Hmm. And, and that's why candles are so important because they give us the, the tools we need to identify the opportunities quickly. Like the problem with spending too much time in front of the charts, apart from the fact that it's taking away what you're trying to set out to achieve by trading in the first place, and that's actually having a lifestyle, Tom. Uh, is that the longer you spend in front of the charts, the more invested you are into actually making a decision, whether it's a good one or a bad one. So if mm. you spend a lot of time in front of the charts, you almost feel obligated to be placing a trade and walking away is almost like a, a wasted effort. If you spend two or three hours analyzing charts, you feel like you're almost obligated to trade. I think it's a very common trap that we certainly fell into many years ago, but we see people all the time still falling into that trap where they invest three or four hours into analysis and they have to place a trade to justify it. So cutting down your analysis time and chart time actually helps uh, alleviate the the fast and furious decisions, if you like. So that's why candlestick reading is so important. It sounds so basic, but it tells you so much about what you need to know. So let's jump into these charts again and just continue with this idea of the doji. Now, again, you mentioned many time frames. I totally agree. I think the markets are fractal. Therefore, in an advanced set up, set up when you think about it, why do we look at a daily? Why do we look at a, a four hour chart? Why do we not look at a four hour and 36 minute chart? You know, the algorithms do look at those. And of course, AI does look at those ones. And you can think of it as markets create structure and the structure is often the key thing that we need to be thinking about. What is structure? It's positioning. And I think not enough people think about positioning. And positioning is, I believe, you know, a huge part of where markets are going to go in terms of retail analysis over the next two to eight, seven years. I think you're going to hear a lot more about positioning and structure is already pretty popular. So. All right, let's think about this chart here for a second. We're on a daily. I think it's a fair time frame to usually, you know, set. It's a clear, you know, multi-session move. So we've got the Asian session, we've got the London Euro session, uh, traditionally known, we've got the New York session. So we have a full 24 hours effectively of trade. So it's probably one of the most important time frames. That's why I also think weekly is the most important time frames overall for positioning from big Wall Street institutions. So when we're thinking about this, what's happening? Well, here we have a high, we have a low, and we have an open and close. We obviously got doji. The doji we know is kind of like equilibrium or an equal level in markets. And when the markets push up, what that's actually doing is it's saying, okay, cool. Well, we know the winners were the buyers. Yeah, Ty? The winners were the buyers, the trend's up, it's all good. When the market comes back down to that level, though, we might be looking for an interaction. So a lot of people are looking traditionally just for a low or just for you know, some area or something like that. What if you were to focus in on this doji zone and create a range? And then that range would be an area that you would then zoom in on, on your five minute chart, on your two hour chart, on your one hour chart. And then you would focus on that for being a day trader. What if you said, well, you know what? I'm not interested in placing a trade or potentially even getting involved in the market until it hits into my area where I believe I have edge. The difference between most investors and most traders and you know success is that we usually have somebody that's actually forming some kind of edge. So mm. we need to think about where our edge is and how we're going to trade it. So smaller time frame, you then have an activation and that activation allows you to get in. But at least you're doing it in a zone that you know you might have some kind of edge in. So Absolutely. I think that's a big yeah. thing. Yeah. And also, when you're talking about multi time frame analysis, I mean, what I'll do, Tom, is I'll, <clears> I'll get you to go back to the pound USD there for just one second. Sure. And, and we'll have a look at it on a daily chart. Yes, we saw it on the two hour chart and we saw some structure happening. What well, we haven't got a 20 moving average here on, on this particular chart, but if we had a 20 moving average on, which I'm, Tom's going to put on for us right now, oh, um, what you're going to see is that 
yeah, this this particular move on on the pound, the pound's been very strong. We've seen a series of higher highs and higher lows, and um, it's basically been yeah tracking up quite significantly. So what we're looking for, we'll just pop the trendy moving average on to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Um, we're going to make it red because cars go faster when they're red. And here we are. We're a twenty. We're sitting at a twenty moving average, um, and we've pulled back. If we measure the uh, length of the last move, um, you can bet your bottom dollar it's going to be a thirty-eight two fib. And so you've got a thirty-eight two fib and a twenty moving average pullback on that particular um, yeah time frame, right? So we we looked at it from the two hour standpoint of okay, this is a zone, but we we already knew it was a, a zone on the daily because it's sitting right under twenty moving average at a thirty eight two pullback. So straight away that's gained our interest, hasn't it, Tom? We're going to go to a two hour chart. We're going to start looking for the breakdowns of the smaller time frame. Then when we go to the to the two hour. And then we're going to see a Wyckoff distribution like we saw in the example. So we've got a zone that we already have identified from the bigger time frame, taken it to the smaller one, identified trading opportunities, given us a clue that maybe this 20 moving average isn't going to be as strong as we think it was or thought it was going to be in the first place. And we're going to be watching, uh, waiting with patience, and we're not going to react. Or, and we're certainly not going to predict, we're going to wait and we're going to wait for the move to break either up or down. What we do know is something is going to happen. And that, and that's the important part. We know this is a zone of interest from the bigger time frame. The smaller time frame verifies it. Now we're waiting for that move and we're going to be prepared for it. It's not going to catch us by surprise because we fully anticipate that this level is going to break. Mm. And it doesn't so, mean necessarily yeah. down. It's going, to, it's going to break in the direction. That's what I'm saying. So mm. I'm not saying it's definitely going to break down, of course. Um, we don't, certainly don't want to be saying that because it could it just as easily break up. But what we do know it's an area of interest and one that needs probably, you know, a time is set on it. You need alerts set around the highs and the lows that we've already identified to let us know that when it does break, um, the move is probably going to be a reasonable trade, either long or short. Yeah, and I think that's important as well. When you're talking about structure, you're talking about the candlesticks inside of something. It's also about, you know, analyzing from a perspective of, okay, we have this ranging kind of area. It's creating structure. We know that it's going to break in a fairly big way, or at least that's a suspicion. Then when it does break one of these zones, we can then say, okay, cool, let's move to the next point. And I call it the next point of equilibrium. Now, from a standpoint of where that could be, you know, just saying there's a doji there, you know, <laughs> doji it, sometimes it, it hold could be uh, right there. areas. Or, or, or uh, it may well be in that high. It, it may well be at the at Yeah, the, at but there's the also a doji up there too. <laughs> so, right. you know, I, I was these two levels. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so you got Doji here and you got Doji here. So I guess like, you know, one of the advanced techniques, obviously Doji's is a fairly big deal. All right, let's move on to some other stuff. So let's talk about here the Euro US dollar and the other ways that we can use candlesticks. Now, Tyrone's going to want to use the 20 moving average, I'm pretty sure in a minute, but because <laughs> I know he's got something here. But, you know, let's just quickly break down some smaller time frames. So we'll go to the two hour for a second. Now, there are there are many reasons why you want to be considering you know the candlestick formations how they've looked where they are those types of things because when structure is created uh, what type of candlesticks happen it will be very very important now this one hasn't really got what i would call an, a clear pattern yet i mean obviously it's gone above this level and it's rejected which you could think is negative but because it went above it kind of broke that level which means that you know it might actually want to go a little bit high you'd be surprised that, that can occur but what we're starting to do here is we're starting to slow down a little bit. Now, the reason what I mean by slow down is you can see aggressive entries at the beginning. We're all through Tyrone's 20 moving average here on the two hour and the one hour. I'm pretty sure you've spoken about this one before, Ty. Uh, then we also had this downward trend line as well that was coming through. So again, multiple different methods starting to play through. Then we have this break up through that point and we have a market coming down and then breaching back up. Now, it's beginning to talk about storylines, okay? And storyline analysis of the market is very important because, again, patience, react, don't predict is one of our biggest concepts. And the main concept behind that is what we're looking for is we're looking for the trap. And candlesticks can show us traps because, again, they can show us wicks. Now, what would happen if we saw something like this? Okay? Now, if we saw something like that, what would people say in the chat right now? Let's see what you would, uh, what everyone would think, Ty. Now, while we wait for that answer, because if we did see something like that, what would you be feeling? Would you be feeling bullish or would you be feeling bearish on this particular uh, particular pattern? 
So while we wait for that one, I'm going to just quickly watch well, you. You got something to say, Ty? No, no. I'm going to say it's going to be very interesting <clears throat> to see what um, the the people say about this because it is really in, in essence what we're talking about. And, and this is these are these can be the traps that we're talking about. Mm-hmm. All right, come on, Ch- uh, Chitty or Blake or a few of your other, other people out there. Make sure you put this one in. What do you think? There's no necessarily. It's not super wrong or anything. Abhijit here coming in with bullish. Yeah, I would agree. This would be a bullish situation. And there's a couple of reasons why. Firstly, you've had the patience. But think about the candlestick analysis you already know and the price action analysis that you already know. So, okay, the market's been very, very short. There's no doubt about that. It's been going short and short and short. So people are going to be very convinced to fight here, Ty, aren't they? Because yep. they've seen the pattern. The Absolutely. first, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the news, or as I like to think of trends as they is the party is spreading, you know, <laughs> the party is yeah. spreading. So the party <laughs> spread, and it, I reckon it's been gate crash potentially. The party's point. on the street. It's already down the yeah, road. Yeah, it's, it's on the street, called. and the cops the <laughs> cops have been called, and you got to get out of there because you don't want to clean it up or get, you know, have to sit there and get interviewed. Yep. So anyway, the, the point is, is that what we see after that is we see this initial push down. Now, that means that all the previous buyers, all the people that have bought here, 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 what's going to happen to their order if that occurs? They're going to be stopped out. Yeah, they're going to be stopped out. Whoops. Too bad, yeah, so the, sad. The average, yeah, the average trade you. is going to be stopped out though, because most of the yeah, time, exactly. most people would be exactly. putting their stop loss around that level because of the previous yep. support. And, at and the start of the let's think about it. With a stop loss, what does that mean for our order? If we had a buy, what does that buy then therefore have to become for us to get out of the buy order? It becomes yep. a sell, yep. which means someone else gets a buy. Now, could that be advantageous to someone that wants the position around there? Of course it could. So remember, think about That's candles liquidity we're talking more. about. And and look, yeah. Yeah, all the answers are look, the answers are great. I, I just love seeing these answers, Tom, because it means that yeah, you know, mm. these people who I know come to these webinars all the time uh mm-hmm. have been listening and they understand exactly what we're talking about. And if if you can see that happen when we're drawing with a yellow texter, you're going to be able to understand that when the market does it too. So you're gonna be immune to yeah, being trapped like the average citizen because <laughs> You, uh, you have an understanding of what the market's yeah, potentially trying to tell you without telling you that the big players- I thought I was just really had, good artist, Ty. Well, it's a little bit of scribble, <laughs> but you know, it, it's not too bad. I, I, hey, I was accused of draw, uh, drawing my own moving averages uh, the other day. So um, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, drew, I drew a crocodile, which I think looked like a, a monster, like a monster Godzilla shark. So yeah, I don't think we're the best drawers, but the point is if you can spot what we're doing on the charts in terms of drawing, then you probably have a good chance in the, in the real Absolutely. world, don't you? <laughs> which Absolutely. is good. Well, yeah. More importantly, so, you know what you're looking for. I think that's what it is. You're alert yeah. to what the market could give you. And, and I think that's that patience part of it. You're waiting for the market to do what you need it to do or what you think it's going to do. And then you react to that rather than try to predict the outcome. And, and I think those three words, mm. um, you know, mm. when, when Tom is long mm. gone, there's going to be someone else bringing up a picture of him saying those three words at the start of their streams um you know because and they're, they're vitally important and, and when they're, yes. they're they're ingrained in your in your mind mm-hmm. prior to every trade that you make uh they're going to help you make better decisions it's just a, it's just really as straightforward as that yeah a lot of people message me actually ty about these three words changing their trading career yeah um, and what i mean by that is because we're all too impulsive and oh, we make yeah. quick decisions and it's because it's too easy. How the hardest point of trading, even it's with not trading. Stick nails the thing, <laughs> is not is not trading, is the yeah, not trading yep. is one of the hard ones. Let's see if yep. everyone agrees in the chat there for that one. But also your your exit levels, uh, so your TP levels and your stop loss levels, often yep. they are also hard. So what yep. patience does allow you to do is it doesn't mean have you know analysis paralysis, never trade or anything like that, but it gives you the patience to not make the initial mistake. See, most people are going to look at this and they're going to say, how good is this? Look at this. Oh, yes. I'm going to trade long. Look at me go. And it gets you. Yeah. Yep. And I'll give you another classic case of this that just happened, which is, of course, oil. So it's a very similar one. Does it hit into a zone I like very much? Absolutely. Does it show a little bit of signs of life? Absolutely. And then, of course, we get a news event that pushes oil back down. So oil is now underneath this level. Notice that in many ways, other than the trend line, uh, these are actually very, very similar setups. So they've got very similar lows put through. Now, that's not to say that it's not continuing to go down low, but it's it's the beginning of your storyline. It's the beginning of your candlestick analysis. And 
are you in a, a zone of interest? Yes, because if you go and have a look at things like the weekly and the daily, you're going to see a lot of weeks. So you can kind of understand why I've got this area analyzed um, on the charts. And of course, you know, it's just a beginning. It's chess. It's not checkers. That's what we're doing. Absolutely. Uh, oil All is right. a very good example. Actually. Yeah, but yeah, well, it's, it, I mean, it's brutally oversold. Dark. Look at this thing one, two, oh, yeah. three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, eight weeks down. That's very rare. Uh, I'm just trying to actually think when that has happened. There's it's one over here, rare. obviously. It, one, two, it, it, three, four, five. You know, I've, I've got this, these, they, well, I've counted these. Uh, I had to look through some of the old history data. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, it's actually really rare. Uh, now yep. there are times where it's happened. 2014, it got yep. pretty brutal. But even then, it wasn't doing anything. But, but look where it started from, though. Yeah, like it was already at a ridiculous. Well, well even then, there though. were still greens in here. There were a few yep. little greens. This one's yep. just eight down. But that doesn't mean that you can be like, "Oh, look at me! I'm going to go and buy the dip," because buying the dip is a is a trading mistake. Generally, I like to say yep. buy the V, buy the recovery, buy the structure, buy the movement, whatever you want to call it. Buy the wait, better candles. You've got to be patient <laughs> and wait for the momentum to shift. If yeah. momentum shifts, yeah. uh, then it's proven. You don't want to be the first peon in the war. We say it a lot. You don't want to be that first person firing the gun and running towards uh, the enemy. That's uh, let it turn around. Let the momentum shift. Let that V <laughs> start, and then you get involved. We always. By the way, yeah. oh, yeah, keep yeah. going. No, I, I was going to say what we said. It, it really rings true. Placing the initial entry is the easiest thing that that uh, to, to do when trading. It's so easy. All you got to mm -hmm. do is hit the enter button. It, it's it's too mm -hmm. easy. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. it's the other elements that actually make trading hard. So get those right before you hit that button. And you're changing. You're, you're basically you'll change the way you trade uh, for the better mm -hmm. in a, in a very very big way. Don't just um, how many people Tom enter and then work out. Oh, I think I should have a stop loss here. My take profit should be here. <laughs> yeah. um, I think yeah. I think it's going long, but I'm not sure. Oh, but I <laughs> think think is not a good word. No, no is even worse. Actually, yeah. I said think is bad. No is worse. Yeah, I think it should be patience, react, don't predict, and don't think. <laughs> <laughs> Play. You should be saying I'm playing my statistical advantage. That's what it should be. I've yes. got another quiz here, Ty, but just before we do the quiz for everybody and get the chat involved, can you please give it a thumbs up if you enjoy these types of videos on the Pepperstone channel? Make sure they know that you enjoy this content. And of course, also, there's a little link down below if you're interested in finding out more about how we do these. We are on our final one of the year, I believe, Ty. Mm. So we're going to say Merry Christmas very soon. But uh, <laughs> but I would like to say that we're coming back strong in 2024. So make sure to sub up so that you remember when it happens. Because we all have, I call it uh, Cocoa Puff Brains. So I would forget as well. But, uh, mm. <laughs> you know, we, we might, we'll be away for a few weeks, but make sure to sub that. Now, Ty, the quiz, the quiz, the quiz, the quiz. Okay, so you already know what happened. Obviously, it went down. But really, should you be looking at buys here? Probably not, yeah. And why would that be? Because we have a week, we have a doji, we have a rejection kind of doji, we have a rejection week. There's not much sense in being long at this point, especially if you see that close. So the next week's more than likely actually going to break down. Now, if it did reverse and it got above eighty dollars, I asked the chat this: What do you guys think? Would would that be a bullish sign, or would you want to see more? What would you think about that? Just from a pure candlestick perspective. So we get a candlestick that closes above all these wicks. What do you think? Let's see what everybody says. Trish says here, you are both so right in answer to probably a few of the things, a few of the home truths, unfortunately, we are talking about before because those are home truths a lot of people don't want to hear. Blake also says, absolutely often hard to sit on your hands. And Trish says she wants to see more. And Ty says, I demand more. And then RGY says, thumbs up to y'all guys. Thank you very much, RGY. Blake says, possible start of a trend change. Yeah, I would say it's probably a possible start to a trend change. If not, um, I would be investigating incredibly hard the structure underneath. Yeah. So this is only a, this is a weekly, remember. So to me, I would say there's probably a trend change going on, uh, but I would want to go and look for the structure first. Now, what we've done there is we've said, okay, we really like the fact that it's changed. We can see that it's closed above. But we also need to go and we need to get some more evidence. Now, that doesn't mean you have to reinvent the real the the everything reinvent everything but we do need to go into the smaller time frames and start to look for the evidence and what you'll find is often you'll have good structure and you may have one of your replicable setups there if you do it's great sign so one rule today is even if you're looking at the 15 minute five minute chart 
zoom out, get up to that weekly at least, get back down, mark your weeklies, mark your dailies, and know where the price is. Otherwise, you're doing yourself a disservice because I can tell you the AI knows where the price is, doesn't it, Ty? Yeah, absolutely. And I would be very disappointed if people got caught into the trap of actually trying to long uh, that particular scenario already because there was not a single candle there that gave you any idea uh, or clue that this market was turning around. In fact, all it was spelling was doom and gloom, really. And and when you're seeing big wicks like that, you know, an attempted long that gets rejected so heavily um, is a very berry sign, Tom. <laughs> it's not yeah. a time to and be. Well, the, and, yeah. and that's where your patience react, don't predict, could come into Absolutely. it, Ty. You could see this and you could say, okay, when the market goes through that low, I'm going to be really interested. Oh, I, I Maybe I'm just going to be short. And if you look at yep. the 15-minute chart, because we have that here marked, you can see that, it kind of gets set up and then it just gets smashed and then it just keeps making lower highs and lower lows all the way since that point into 69.50, which was pretty much one of your targets. So this was the lead up. This was the huge rejection week. This was the flow flow next the next week. And you can really see the strength in, in a trade like that. Yeah, no, 100%. I... And this is why we love candles, because it gives us so much information so quickly, and it paints that picture very, very clearly. It's almost like a blueprint mm -hmm. of what the buyers and sellers are doing. And I mean, that sounds a bit cliche, and you might think it's oh, it, yeah, it's all right just to say that, but really, it's telling mm -hmm. you, what, what else could you possibly want to know, <laughs> Tom? There's nothing else that you could possibly want to know uh, from a candle other than the high, the low, the open, and the close. It, it tells you everything about that particular period. All you've got to do is put the pieces together at the right area, and it puts you at such a, a, a good advantage, doesn't it? It's um, it's not just about looking for bearish engulfing candles or bullish engulfing no. candles um, no. and trading every single one of them or getting an algorithm to trade every single one and see how many uh, will work out. Your, your results are not going to be that great, I can tell you that right now. But you, you trade engulfing candles, bullish or bearish, in the right zones and you will see an extraordinary difference uh, in the results versus just trading every single one that comes up. Yeah. And, and again, the storyline is key to that as well because the, the area is going to be also in the storyline. So Absolutely. here's just an example of gold recently. Now, of course, anybody can see this huge rejection, but it's also the story that comes into it. Now, if you remember back two weeks ago or a week and a half ago, whatever it is now, that gold was getting a lot of focus. and Rightfully so. I mean, it was very exciting. It's an all-time high, you know, witnessing history, all that type of stuff. And then it goes up. And I remember this because it was Monday morning time. It was just, just going absolutely ballistic. And what that was clearly a sign of was it was quite, kind of a sign of short squeeze. And the short squeeze was clearly happening to people that had been leveraged, unfortunately, over the weekend. And they were getting liquidated. And of course, if you've got a short position that's getting liquidated, it becomes a buy. And when you've got thin volume, you can see what happens here in this huge chart. So when that rejected, because this is such an unusual move, it actually brings up the case that there's a very good statistical chance that will actually start to weaken for a period. And there actually is data behind that. But you know, the candlesticks itself kind of showed it with that huge wick rejection. So that huge wick rejection with the story behind it was the advanced technique. And I kind of want to leave it in some ways there, Ty. I want to start talking about candlesticks as more of a story. If you got that out of today, if you got out the idea of thinking about positioning and structure, then we hope you enjoyed it. I guess if you also enjoy this type of stuff, we might as well let you know that we do have a course on it over at fxevolution.com on Day Trading Masterclass. It's very good for this type of thing if you're interested in getting multi time frame all the way down. But we also want to ask you to ask questions. So if you have questions, now is your time to do it. I've already got one um, here coming through from Ty C. He says, how much of this was due to a US ship in the Gulf under some kind of missile attack? I don't really think necessarily the news stories are the best read. I think that often it is profit being made in the underlying and sometimes the news can be a great narrative to push these stories. Now you mm. might say, well, that's not true, but I would say that price action is your greatest lead. And by the time you find out about news, if anyone's ever had access to a Bloomberg terminal, you wouldn't really understand how behind you are with news. Mm. Now, funnily enough, in this day and age, Ty, I think Twitter might be, or X might be even faster because people are seriously quick on that thing now. 
But really, algorithms can pick the news up way faster than you can. They can dissect it. They can figure it out. You're unlikely to have edge. Go where you have edge. That's what I say. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, interestingly um, enough, our year has wound up very, very quickly, Tom. It feels only uh, like yesterday that we started to do these Mm -hmm. webinars on a weekly basis. And I just wanted to uh, say uh, to everybody before we wrap it up for the year that we really, really do appreciate uh, your support right throughout the year. We know that your time is valuable and uh, you giving us your time to to join us in these uh, webinars and streams. You know, on behalf of Pepperstone, um, who have put this all together, and um, and Tom and myself, we we really want to say a big thank you, actually, to really appreciate uh, the time that you're giving us. We're hoping that we can make a difference to your trading, even in a, if it's in a small way. Uh, so, you know, small things add up to big things. Things and um, we're, we've got some very big plans for 2024. We're going to keep bringing these um, weekly webinars to you, so you can set your clock by them. Like Thomas said earlier, it's very important that you do uh, register for them, so you actually get the alert, so you don't ever miss any. Yes. But we are, we're always here, same time, same channel. But we also encourage you that if, if there's something that you um, think that you may have missed, check out the Pepperstone Library because there is a very, very big library of topics that we've covered over many years now uh, that may actually give you a little bit more insight into what we talk about on a a daily or a weekly level but also if you have some ideas that you think you'd like us to cover for you that could actually enlighten uh, or or shed some light onto your your trading techniques please feel free to send them through to pepperstone support because they we get all the feedback and uh, we always want to build and create the best product out there we believe that uh yeah we've got you know the best community uh out there so yeah we love having you here and we do really really appreciate your support so um i just wanted to say that before we we did wrap it up for the year tom because i know it seems like um it's gone very very quickly this year uh, there's no question about that and um next year promises to be a lot bigger yeah, I think with next year, I'm really excited to see. I think it's going to be volatile, Ty. I think there's going to be a lot of ups and downs, and yeah. that means good good trading, good, trading, good day trading, exactly. and, and everything else. I mean, we've got the VIX at 12 right now, so I'd like to see. But it's more about central banks. So what central banks mm-hmm. are going to be doing is all sorts of monetary policy changes as they try to unwind probably what they've done with this tight policy to try to get rid of inflation. And you know what's great for currency traders out there as well and commodity traders is that usually brings vol. And that usually brings big moves. So get ready for some trend, I think, in 2024, up, down, all around, (laughs) as we navigate the tightrope of the Federal Reserve. But we did want to also say thank you so much for watching, as Ty mentioned, and we do appreciate your time. So here's to a great 2024. We hope you have a very merry and happy Christmas, I guess, with all of your family and friends if you do celebrate it. Otherwise, we hope you bring in the new calendar year with some cheer regardless. And uh, yeah, I guess in Australia, we'll we'll be enjoying the sun while everyone else will be enjoying some snow tie. (laughs) Absolutely. Thank you so much, everybody. And we'll see you uh, in January 2024. All right. Thank you very much.